Okay, so these are Kolmogorov's three axioms for a probability measure. Now, based on these, we can derive some corollaries, some results. The first one, we will base on this observation. Now, for any event A in the event space, obviously, by definition, let's say this is event A, the complement of event A is here. And obviously, by definition, they are disjoint. Event A and its complement is disjoint. They have no overlap, no common outcomes. And in this case, I'm going to apply axiom number three to these two, okay? Probability of the reunion, the union of event A and the, its complement, okay, as you see here, is going to be equal to the sum of probability of A and probability of its complement by axiom number three. Okay, but when you look at this union, A union, its complement. Again, by definition, this is the sample space, right? And now at this point, I can write probability of the sample space equals probability of A plus probability of its complement. And if you apply axiom number two, if you remember, that's you must assign one to the probability of the sample space. So this here is one, right? So that gives me this. Probability of event A is equal to one minus probability of its complement. Of course, alternatively, you can write this as probability of A complement is equal to one minus probability of A. Okay, so that's the first corollary. And secondly, from this, we can write this result. How so? You see, probability of A here is given by one minus a probability, this here, particularly this here. And we know from axiom number one that any probability is non-negative. So this quantity here is greater than or equal to zero. And when I subtract that quantity from one, the result, which is probability of A, cannot be more than one because this quantity here is non-negative. At the best case, it is zero, so probability of A can be one. But if it is positive, of course, probability of A will be uh, obviously less than one. Therefore, you see, this relationship here gives me the observation that any probability, the probability of any event, is upper bounded by one. Okay, so the first axiom was probability of A is greater than or equal to zero. It was not one uh, greater than or equal to the probability of A greater than or equal to zero. So this here does not have to appear in the axiom because it can be derived from the set of axioms, okay? It's a result rather than an axiom itself, okay? So that's the second result. Um, so these two, uh, the, the axiom here and this result here actually gives you a way to check your computations, let's say. Let's say you are solving your problem and at any point, if you encounter a probability that is negative or more than one, then you must be sure you have made some mistake. Okay, then go check your computations. Uh, so it, it gives you a way to check your work along the way. Next, probability of empty set. Now, obviously, when you apply this to the sample space, let's say A is S, okay? A, because this is satisfied for any event A. And if I uh, put the sample space S in place of A here, I get probability of sample space, right? Equals one minus the probability of its complement. The complement of the sample space is what? Obviously, it's the empty space. And since by axiom number two, this is one, therefore this must be zero. So clearly, 
probability of the empty set is zero. No surprise here. 